I'm Jessica Minton for IB Times TV, and joining me today is Jonathan Corpina from Meridian Equity Partners. Jonathan, thank you again for joining thank me. It's you. always a pleasure. So a lot has happened since the last time we spoke after the Fed worries last week. Now there's concern about China and its outlook for economic growth. How concerning is that when the U.S. and Europe are their biggest export partners? You know, I think it's quite concerning. Um, just to kind of take a step back a little bit, we've been so focused on the U.S. economic data that's here, and we've been focusing on all the information that's coming out of Washington, that I think for a little while we kind of put Europe and and the, the Far East to the side. So now that we've gotten through the last two or three trading sessions and we've seen the way the activity's been here, um, I think investors are trying to look for other things to hang their hat on to see when is this right time to stay in, to, to stay in this market or to get back into this market. And the numbers and the information that we're getting out of, uh, of China is concerning. And I think that's why we continue to see the pressure on the markets today. There's not a lot of, ec there's zero economic data that came out today. So investors are, are, are looking for something, but the information that we're getting so far is, is not helping us. So how does that affect all the other regions? Clearly, in global markets and global economies that we have here, what happens in one place can correlate to effects in other places, whether it's China to Europe or the US or vice versa on the way back. Um, everyone's intertwined together. So we're definitely going to see some correlation between the numbers that we see in China and how it's going to affect our economy and Europe's economy. So how has the session so far performed today based on all of this different information from last week and then from China today? Uh, you know, heading into the weekend, I think investors um, wanted to take the weekend, take a deep breath, take a step back and try to really get a good view of where we are as we're heading into this week, which is the end of the month, end of the quarter. Um, there was there was no silver lining that came out over this weekend. And I think the momentum that we've seen over the last three trading sessions is continuing here. That's what's most concerning to me at this point right now is that Friday session was, a, a, we'll call it a tie, not a win, not a loss, just kind of hung in there, which did show a positive sign to me that the market was taking a breath. But now we're seeing that that second leg down in the market today. And as you mentioned, there is no U.S. macro data today, but looking ahead for tomorrow, we are going to see those durable goods orders, which haven't exactly had year-over-year -year growth since after the um, financial crisis. But looking at that, as the Fed begins to start talking about possibly scaling back, is that what we'll see if the economy can sustain without QE when we do look at durable goods and manufacturing? Right. I, I, I think when the Fed makes their statements and now takes us takes a step back and see okay how is the economy going to react and where the scale back is going to affect the economy they're clearly going to look at those economic data to see if there's any inkling of hope any insight um, that in fact yes this economy can stand on our own and we can slowly wind down our program that's there so it's it's a whole process um, of all the economic data that comes out of Washington that each little piece of that pie there is going to give insight as to what is the right procedure in slowing down this program. And finally, tomorrow, we also will see new home sales as well as the price indexes released for housing. And after seeing a rise in equity prices as well as home prices earlier this year, they're supposed to create this sort of wealth effect. But how long can that actually last when we do see personal income and the average wages just remaining to stay at the same level, sort of just inconsistent? Right, we're gonna start seeing a disconnect very soon in that, right? We, we wanna see a trend where there's a tunnel where both those numbers, if they're gonna move up, move in the same direction. Right now we're seeing income staying at one level and home prices raising higher, mortgage rates are going higher. So I think at some point in the next few months, we are gonna see a larger disconnect where the inventory is gonna to start to build up and then home prices are gonna stall and then people are gonna start figuring out, okay, am I able to take that next step or are we staying where we are right now? I don't think we're gonna see it just yet, um, but probably towards the end of the summer, once we get back to school time, people who are moving into new school districts want to get in before that school period starts. So once we start to see September, October, I think that's when we're going to probably see a little bit more of a disconnect in, that, in the income versus spending.